There's a hidden gem in Miami dedicated to the preservation and exhibition of historic locomotive equipment. Built on the site of former Naval Air Station Richmond, the second largest airship base in the U.S. during World War II, it has over 40 historic rail cars, including the presidential rail car Ferdinand Magellan. In April 1958, this armor-plated rail car used by Presidents Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, and Reagan was declared surplus by the government. A few months later, in January 1959, former U.S. car number one was acquired by the Young Museum. Although it didn't resemble the presidential car when it first showed up, through a lot of hard work, it has been restored to its former glory. But more on this historic car later. During World War II, wounded soldiers would be transported by rail between medical facilities. These moving hospitals carried one doctor, two nurses, four other medical personnel, and up to 33 patients. This car was called a Jim Crow car because of the segregated seating. During the days of luxury train travel, cars had porters who tended to the passengers like a hotel bellhop, cook, maitre d', and personal assistant all rolled into one. While these porters were exclusively African-American men and suffered the indignities of the Jim Crow era, they banded together to form the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, the first African-American union in the U.S. in 1925. The California Zephyr runs between Chicago and Oakland. A bar car at the end of the train served up drinks and offered the opportunity to converse with your fellow passengers while its windows provided a view of the scenery. It also allowed access to the Vista Dome section of the car that had seats positioned higher than the rest of the train for even more spectacular views along the route. The caboose was an important part of a freight train. Crew members could keep an eye on the entire train from here to look for shifting loads, damage to the equipment, or overheating axles. It gave them a chance to catch problems before they became something much bigger. They also served as home away from home for crews as they spent extended periods away from their families. With beds, a stove for heating and cooking, the observation seats, and a bathroom, they had everything they would need for riding the rails. The Ferdinand Magellan is unique among rail cars because it was the only one specifically built for the President of the United States. After the United States entered World War II, Secret Service agent Mike Riley and Press Secretary Stephen Early suggested President Franklin Roosevelt should have a specially equipped armored car instead of the standard rail car supplied by the Pullman Company. As part of the refurbishment, the original six bedrooms were reduced to four and the dining room and observation lounge were enlarged. Two of the bedrooms served as a suite for the President and First Lady with a fully equipped bathroom with bathtub between them. The front of the car held quarters for two stewards, a pantry, galley, storage, ice bunkers, and the mechanical equipment. With 5-H thick armor covering the top, bottom, and sides and 3-inch thick bullet-resistant sealed windows, the car became very secure, but also very hot. Air conditioning was provided by blowing air over the pipes carrying the meltwater from the ice. A few other modifications were bank vault style doors at the rear entrance, two escape hatches, one in the lounge and one in the president's bathroom for emergencies, exterior loudspeakers, phones in every room that could be connected to a train side outlet supplied by the local phone company, and a custom wheelchair elevator for President Roosevelt. This was removed after his death in 1945. All of these modifications increased the car's weight from 160,000 pounds to 285,000, making it the heaviest passenger rail car ever used in the U.S. The Ferdinand Magellan traveled at the end of a special presidential train which included other Pullman sleeping cars for staff and reporters, baggage cars, and a communications car operated by the Army Signal Corps. While built for Roosevelt, other presidents benefited from its use as well. The open-air platform on the rear of the car was used by President Truman during his whistle-stop campaign speeches. It was also the location of the famous photograph of Truman holding the newspaper with the incorrect headline, Dewey Defeats Truman. President Eisenhower used it a few times, mainly to travel to his farm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The last official use was in 1954 when Mamie Eisenhower used it to travel to Connecticut to christen the first nuclear-powered submarine, the USS Nautilus. 
The president's bedroom has Roosevelt's actual wheelchair. It was built specifically for the train to fit down the narrow hallways. The lounge at the rear opened to an open-air platform where the president could address the crowds. The Ferdinand Magellan was designated a National Historic Landmark by the United States Department of Interior National Park Service on February 4, 1985.